hello everyone and welcome back to the show. Uh, today we have another uh, uh, project that's uh, funding on Kickstarter th at this time and uh, he's uh, been on here before uh, with uh, last year, about a year ago. So let me go ahead and bring him in and we'll catch up and find out uh, more about this project. Hi, Jim. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> I'm good. Thanks for having me back on your show. Oh, well, thanks for coming back. Hey, well, thanks for uh, uh, sending me the email, letting me know that you were doing the uh, another uh, campaign. I, you know, I try to keep up on things, but you know, you just can't <laughs> with yeah. everything that's going on. Yeah, for sure. So, um, yeah, I think I think we, we probably talked about last time, but kind of um, give us an introduction into your introduction into comics and you know how you got into you know doing what you're doing now. Uh, my introduction to comics was probably like eight or nine years old when my uh, my mom got me a giant omnibus of the Death and Return of Superman, um, and I just loved the epic scope of that story. I loved all the different uh, Supermen that they created, um, and it really just kind of inspired me to just kind of try to tell stories with uh, that massive of a scope, uh, and uh, you start with very uh very crappy garfield knockoff comic strips uh and then eventually you build your way to something like star noir uh which we launched the first book last year uh we raised about 14k for that book uh it is about a 1940s detective who teams up with a gray alien to stop a shapeshifter who's killing lapd officers inside central station uh it's a, a mixture of uh la noir meets the x-files uh there are six books in the series it's a big gripping murder mystery, uh, and we're on book two, uh, and we're doing pretty well so far. So what was, again, maybe we covered this last time, but it's been a year and I have a memory like a sieve. Uh, <laughs> so so what was the inspiration? I mean, you kind of mentioned the X-Files and stuff like that, but what was the inspiration for the project? Um, it's kind of just a, uh, a mashup of just two two different genres that I'm very passionate about. Um, I um, I watch a lot of old Hollywood movies, stuff from the 40s. Um, I'm just very entertained uh, by the kind of simplistic, very straightforward, almost like stage-like play nature of those films. Um, and then, uh, you know, uh, I also, you know, love alien abduction stories, uh, anything to do with uh, extraterrestrials. Uh, so I just thought that um, Star Noir would be a good mashup of two of my uh, big, two of my biggest passions. And uh, since this is the second issue, uh, kind of, you know, bring everybody up to date on what's happened so far. And I'm, and I'm sure that they can get the first issue through this campaign. But, you know, what what um, what happened last issue and where are the characters now? <laughs> um, so so uh, Alan Miller, uh, who is our, uh, our our human detective and our 1940s detective, um, he uh, is called in to investigate the murder of a traffic detective named Patrick Perkins, uh, who is uh, brutally murdered on the Sixth Street Bridge uh, with his heart missing. Uh, the, uh, there's a, a lot of mystery surrounding how he died. Uh, and then one evening, Alan is met by a uh, gray alien who tells him telepathically that uh, a shapeshifter is, is not only responsible for killing Patrick Perkins, uh, but that he is posing as one of Alan's fellow officers in Central Station. Uh, as the, the, the book sort of barrels to the end, we learn that that gray alien is going to be uh, his, Alan's new partner, um, posing as a, uh, a human. Uh, everyone else can see uh, a character, somebody who looks more like Tom Holland, while he sees uh, a, a short gray alien. Uh, and the story gets into to why Alan, Alan can only see um, Ellis's gray alien form. Ellis is the, the gray alien. Yeah. Yeah. So, um... When you, as the, the, also this being the second issue, uh, are there any, you know, which, are there any characters that maybe, you know, in the first issue, you kind of like, you said, okay, you know, this character's just here. And now they're kind of becoming more into their own, you know, they've grown as, you know, even as, you know, the series has gone on in its short, you know, kind of life. <laughs> Um, well, one of the characters that was teased in the first book, uh, it was just on a flyer, uh, was this club singer named Stella Belafonte. Um, she's heavily featured um, in this book, not only in the cover, one of our rewards is a pinup of her. Um, and yeah, she's, she's uh, without spoiling it, she's got a big secret. 
uh, and that's revealed to Alan in book two. Um, but yeah, now now that uh, uh, Alan and Ellis are partnered up, uh, and we know the stakes of the you know the mur main murder mystery, uh, now these two detectives are sort of off and running, and we're going to get to see their uh, contrasting um, police work styles, where Alan is very more brutish, kind of in your face, and Ellis is a more diplomatic, kind of nervous rookie type. So they're kind of the uh, odd couple. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, who is, is is it the same artist that uh, you worked with on the first issue? Yeah, it's the the same same artist, top to bottom, same same artist, same colors, same letterer. Um, we have all six of these scripts fully written already, uh, mm -hmm. so we really kind of just jumped right in as soon as we were done with the first book. And who is the, you know, who, who, who's, who is the artist and the rest of the creative team and how did you kind of, you know, meet them or pick them for the project? Uh, Pablo de Bonis is the artist. He's from Argentina. I met him on a Facebook group called Connecting Writers and Artists. I uh, just put out a, you know, just saying that I was trying to look, I was looking for an artist for this uh, sci-fi noir story. He uh, reached out. He started doing concept art for the very characters that went on to be in the uh, in the book. Uh, Vinicius Townsend is the colorist. He's from Brazil. I found him on Instagram. Uh, he did some really cool um, GI Joe covers for IDW. Uh, I really love the vintage kind of style that he he kind of added to um, Pablo's uh, line art. Uh, and then our letterer Marco Ventura. He's from Italy uh, and just a really wonderful guy. Just um, He's making a cat board game right now, uh, which is, is kind of, it's kind of funny because um, he works on this very lighthearted cat board game, but then does this like gritty dark noir story with me. Mm -hmm. um, but the whole team is great. Um, they all they are all equally as passionate as I am about the story that we're making, uh, and we really just kind of play off of each other. Um, I think that's kind of the the strength of our team. So. How to, how how was the first? I mean, you you I think you mentioned that you know the first uh, Kickstarter was very successful. How um, were you able to get this out the, the book out to you know like shows in between this one and kind of um, expose more people to it, or is it just kind of you're just doing it through the Kickstarter right for now? Um, well, after this Kickstarter uh, wraps, I'm going to start taking the uh, I see I have the book here. Um, they started taking the book to to shows. Uh, I just it was just very busy over the last ten months. Like literally every day, just working on Star Noir, just trying to get it made, and then also get it printed and shipped to everybody. Uh, but now that I have all the books printed for the first book, and we're already <laughs> well into making the second book, um, I definitely will be uh, going to more trade shows uh, in 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 twenty twenty four for sure. And I know uh, that you were. New York Comic Con last year, mm -hmm. with with the book, how how did was it received there? Oh, it was great. Uh, the uh, we went to a, a creator after con uh, right after on on that Friday night, um, and so many people were just backing it like that. That mm -hmm. the entire night they would would show them the art, show them the story, and they were just absolutely hooked. And they were just like, "Yep, I need a copy. Yep, I need a copy." Um, so <laughs> it was it was uh, actually a, a pretty well received. Uh, uh, New York Comic Con last year. And as a writer, um, who do you kind of look to for, you know, your style and influence your style of writing? I mean, who's, you know, I think it's a combination of Will Eisner and Alan Moore. Uh, mm -hmm. Will Eisner just has a very, very visual style. I feel like uh, so much of the, the story is told visually that when the, the words are there, they just they're really just there to contextualize what's going on. There's so much emotion coming through just, just reading panel to panel. Mm -hmm. um, and then Alan Moore, just the, the meticulous way you go about um, telling a story. Um, you know, there's so much research that went into um, 1947 Los Angeles to, to, to build it for Star Awards, um, not just the architecture, but how, how characters speak, how fast they speak, uh, the type of slang that they would use, um, and really just o overturning as many rocks as we could uh, to just have a really authentic experience and make the, the world of Star Noir just feel really alive and lived in. 
<laughs> well, you already answered my next question about uh, doing, you know, research because you know it is a, a time, you know, time piece, a period piece. I guess is the word I'm looking for, and it it, it plays like very well to what one would expect from, you know, those that era. Um, what you know, what was what was it about that era that you know kind of besides the noir feel that that era has that you know kind of made that you know be the setting for what you wanted to do? Uh, I just love how iconic uh, so much of uh, every aspect of the 1940s was, like the, the the architecture of Los Angeles at the time, the the cars, the time, the the suits at the time. Um, yeah, everything is just so iconic uh and i think that's what really attracts me to it and then also the you know the post-war americana and you know we there are a number of times where there's an american flag in the shot where that's the police station or something um and we really try to make it really kind of glamorous and really jump out to kind of really play up that aspect of that era and what have you learned as a writer or even a comic creator as you've gone through the process i mean you said that the the series is basically written what have you learned you know through this process um this process um uh, i mean i, I <laughs> guess i i guess i learned to 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 not stress as much or, or to, to manage my stress uh I think that's kind of been the big thing because, you know, when you're running a Kickstarter or whether or we're running or we're making the book, I always want to be a lot further than we are. Um, mm -hmm. So I think just it, trying to learn to manage the stress and just kind of being OK with. All right. This is as far as we are today. We'll try to do it better tomorrow. And did you learn anything from the the issue, first issues Kickstarter experience that you were able to kind of build upon for this one? Um, yeah, for sure. I mean, I, what was what was great about uh, the first Kickstarter is that the uh, the reward tiers, we were we nailed a pretty good price point. Uh, I didn't I didn't feel like we were overcharging it or underselling it. Um, so that was pretty good. Um, and just, um, you know, learning kind of things of of the Kickstarter marketplace of like including uh, early bird promotions, um, you know, ha having uh, time-based uh, rewards also kind of galvanizes people to kind of jump in. Um, so yeah, just a lot of things that I learned from other creators from their successful campaigns on the platform. And so for this campaign, what are you offering, you know, for your reward tiers? Uh, so you can uh, you can get the copy of the second book. You can get a copy of both books. Uh, you can get a really really cool uh, 1940s pinup of Stella Belafonte. Uh, it's inspired by a 1940s pinup art of the time. Um, so that's definitely worth checking out. Um, you can get a uh, 11 by 17 uh, cover a poster of the cover. Uh, and we also are doing an exclusive uh, black and white version of that cover. Uh, the cover was inspired by the movie poster, The Maltese Falcon. Uh, mm -hmm. So when you see it in, in black and white, you you really see the uh, the homage really really jump out at you. Um, and then we have um, everything from the first campaign. Everything there is an add-on. So uh, if you want the pinup, uh, but you need an extra copy, you need a copy of book one. You can definitely do that. You can get the the poster. Uh, that's right over there with my shoulder. You can get that poster mm -hmm. from, from book one uh, as an add-on. Um, yeah, it's just, uh, I think it's just a really well-rounded campaign. I think there's really something for everybody, whether you're a returning reader or you're just picking up for the first time. Um, is there anything else that maybe you, you know, wanted to say about the project or the issue that maybe, you know, I haven't asked and Oh, uh, yeah. You, you want you want you want people to make you know you want to make sure people know about. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, if you've not read the first book, if you go to the campaign page for book two, uh, you can read for free a nine-page PDF of the first book. So that gives you a great sense of the story, of the plot, the the characters, the art style. Um, it's it's just a really uh, a really good chunk of Star Noir for you to. Uh, hopefully make your decision to, to back <laughs> mm -hmm. the book. So um, as we kind of wrap up here, because I don't want to keep you too long, um, if you want to kind of give like a final pitch for the book, you know, 
you know, a final, you know, where people can find you on social media, then, you know, we can, mm-hmm. we can we'll do, we'll do that. Sure. Um, so if you like uh, very detailed driven, meticulous storytelling, uh, you're definitely going to be into this. If you love, if you love any kind of, uh, crime stories, detective stories. If you like the game, L- if you like the game La Noir, this is like a must pick up because we take uh, how we kind of showcase clues and stuff is very much uh, inspired by that game. And then on the flip side, if you uh, you know like you know not just uh, aliens, but um, a more grounded depiction of aliens, uh, something that kind of uh, takes horror elements, um, you're also going to love that as well. Uh, so I think it's a really, a really great mashup of, of those two ideas. Uh, and you can find me on Instagram at, at banana bat. Uh, I, I post a lot of uh, great old timey reels using the, using the art. Uh, and then you can find me um, on Twitter at T slash J. And uh, how many more, how many uh, more days are left on the campaign as of, well, as of now, or, you know, I, I always, when I, I'll calculate how many days are left when I actually post the video. But um, where where's the campaign now in relationship to uh, your goal? Uh, we are currently at seventy five percent, and we have twenty three days to go. Uh, and we have some pretty awesome stretch goals, so we'd love to kind of get <laughs> get get to the full uh, get to the full goal before that, so we can start uh, unlocking those stretch goals. Well, um, if there's nothing else, um, it was it was great catching up with you. I know, again, I know we tried to catch up at New York Comic Con last yeah. year, and it was it's always just that yeah. show is always busy, and you're running in two directions at the same time, and, yeah, <laughs> and then exactly. at the end, it, and then at the end of the day, you're just tired. <laughs> right? Yeah, I, I hear you. It's, it's a very I, I used to do four, four all four days. Now I can only do two. <laughs> well, that was two more than I was able to do this year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, but uh, yeah, great catching up with you. Um, how's you know? I I know it's probably you're still probably more focused on getting this book out. Uh, when do you when are when do you have plans for the you know when the third book is coming out, or you know, do you have a timeline for when you hope to be finished with the series as a whole? Uh, well, the sooner the better. Um, <laughs> no, um, <laughs> no. Uh, so it, it, the first book from the end of the campaign to uh, people having it in their mailbox, that was about 10 months. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we're trying to really beat that and get that closer to six. Uh, we're already working on it, we're already drawing it right now. Uh, so we already kind of have a head start. Um, and then, yeah, just, just trying to kind of just jump right into the next issue. I mean, like, as I said, everything's written. So there really is no waiting around, you know, as soon as mm-hmm. we finish one, we pick up the other one and then we bring it back to Kickstarter to pitch the third book. And then uh, hopefully, um, you know, if this campaign does well, um, I can start bringing out some other stories that I've written because uh, Star-, Star Noir is, is, is one of uh, one of several that I have. And again, remind me, is this is the first thing that you've actually you know, written, correct? Or, you know, have is, or is in the process of publishing, correct? Uh, no, this is the, the second book. Uh, the, okay. That, that's, that's, that's really um, be, been really successful. The first one was a, a cyberpunk comic about a virtual reality superhero called uh, Reloader. Uh, that was, mm-hmm. uh, that was like 2016, 2017. Yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah. <laughs> but yeah, here we All are. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, definitely uh, we'll have to chat again when, you know, the next, issues are done and we'll find out how you know this campaign went and plans plans for the story moving forward and um again i want to thank you for your time and good luck on the campaign and you can follow the campaign um as we track it on our crowdfunding corner on comic watch which uh posts every saturday at noon on our site comicwatch.com you can follow us on twitter at at comic watch hq and the same on blue sky um so check us out there we have other things we have reviews we have uh you know news and all that commentary sometimes but again tony thank you uh for stopping by um best of luck and uh we'll 
definitely have to chat in the future and we'll make it less than a year this time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, hopefully. Thank you again for having me back. All right, thanks and have a great day.